Uh, when we did demonstrations, which led to what you have now had being referred to as a national dialogue, you know, because a people united, first of all, can never be defeated. As Kenyans, we believe we remain united and, and get rid of the problem, the cancer of tribalism. When you all ask questions, I didn't hear any of you saying, I'm Kikuyu, I am Kamba, I am Luya, I am Luo. You are just wonderful Kenyan children. Clap for yourselves. <laughs> so the first thing we must get rid of is tribalism in this country. And therefore, under the constitution which was inaugurated by late President Kibaki, we call it Constitution 2010, Kenyans have a right to demonstrate in peaceful, in a peaceful manner. Recently you saw the doctors demonstrating and unfortunately the police who have not properly been educated about some of these rights under the constitution went down there and tear gassed um, a very honorable members of very honorable profession, that of the doctors. They don't understand that this is a right guaranteed under the constitution the right to picket, the right to demonstrate, the right to sit down, just like you have a right to worship God in any manner. That's why some of you are wearing hijab, some of you, uh, um, you know, you go to churches, various churches, you have the right, the right to worship God in any way you prefer. That is in the constitution. So you will hear, then, then our wonderful young lady from Alliance, when we went to the streets, one of the things we are saying as uh, as a meal, La Umoja One Kenya, is the high cost of living. The high cost of living had a very big thing about education. This young lady here is talking about private schools and public schools, you know, the, the kind of uh, different treatment they get when it comes to a location or whatever, uh, a location of the Minister of Education. Now, our view was we needed to make education affordable. In fact, the right to education is a basic human right. This is why under Mzee Kibaki, I was a minister for education, we said primary education is free and compulsory. You may have heard of an old man called Maruge at 84. He went to primary one because he suddenly realized, oh, free primary education. So education is the right. Um, and then had Azimio, for example, taken the leadership of the country, we had made it very clear in our, in our manifesto that from Form 1 to Form 4, right, Kenyan students in our public schools were going to get to school without bothering the parents with school fees. But we are not in government, and this is why now Kenya Kwanzaa are wrestling with what they can do. We wish them well. But that was our manifesto. Your uncle Madivi D was with me in one Kenya lands. <laughs> okay, that time. A uh, good friend, as a good friend, Musalia Mudavadi. Um, we, as we pass that information to him, we'll tell him a beautiful young niece in alliance wishes you well, and so do all the others. And we wish each other well as Kenyans. All right, but we will differ on policy. When you see Kenya Kwanzaa having their kind of manifesto, Azimio, Waipa and DAP are members of Azimio having a different approach, it should not scare you. We're just trying to tell you, you have choices. And one time an American ambassador here called Johnny Carson made a very land, uh, uh, a very important statement. He said choices, and that is what you'll be doing when you're 18 years and you have to choose your leaders. You remember that those choices will have consequences. And so you can choose bad leaders or you can throw them away. But throwing bad leaders away comes with a lot of challenges. You have to wait another five years. <laughs> and that is what you are doing right now as a country. Uh, one of the big democracies.